Hello everyone and welcome back to Archeo SMP Season 2. Today I am all about them bees. I want honey farms and candles and honeycomb to finally wax the grills on the top of my hearths. So let's go find some bees. But first, actually, before, hold on, before we find some bees, <laughs> I need more storage. So let me build a storage building real quick. I've made this in the same style as the buyer house, but it is a touch smaller. It's like maybe half the size. Even though it's half the size, it fits a surprising amount of chests and barrels and such. And I could actually put more barrels in the floor, I'm realizing, if I wanted more storage. So this storage building is probably going to last me for quite a while. I'm honestly not usually motivated enough to build a massive storage system or like any kind of redstone storage. Not that I think there's anything wrong with those. I'm just not motivated to do it. <laughs> so, so I think between bundles and eventually shulker boxes, this building is going to do just fine for probably the, the majority of the season, if not the entirety of it. So now that I've got all this extra storage, we need some bees. We need bees for honey. So let's go adventuring for bees. Right, so what's happened here? Oh, a dog! And I have bones! Do you want to be my friend? Please? Yeah! Right, so what happened here <laughs> is um, I went to go look for like a naturally spawning beehive because I was like, let's go on an adventure. So I went on an adventure. And then I didn't find a naturally spawning beehive because it took forever to find a biome that beehives naturally spawn in anyway. And that's when I remembered that you can just you can just keep growing trees near flowers in any biome um, to to get a beehive. I did I didn't remember this until I was over a thousand blocks away from from my base. So I'm glad that I had saplings and bone meal, and eventually I got some bees. But before we can do anything with honeycomb or honey or bees or anything um we we need we need some materials from the nether i need nether quartz but also while we're at it some soul sand would be good if i can find some so let's go to the nether okay now obviously i've been to the nether quite a bit but i've only ever been on the roof so it's time to venture oh <laughs> i thought i was falling down the hole for a minute it's time to venture down it's good that we're in, well, it's good and bad that we're in uh, Crimson Forest because hoglins might happen. But I would really love one of the mushrooms, Crimson Fungus. And actually, while we're here, is this, is this somebody, ah, oh, somebody's tunnel. Okay, all right. See? Okay. I'm just going to, oh. I forget how quickly <laughs> efficiency uh, picks. We'll just mine the the nether wart. Okay, all right. I just want a few of these so that we have them because um, I do want to do stuff with mushrooms and I would like to use the nether mushrooms as well. So, uh, oh, there's a fungus. Okay, let's go get this. How are we in terms of hoglins? I'm not seeing any, which is good. Um, there's a fungus there, but I don't know that I want to assume it's good for me to use. Okay, all right. I've got a couple. That's all I need for that. And then I need nether quartz. And if we can find warped fungus, that'd be great too. But the chances of that happening are relatively slim. Let's let's not fall in holes. There's so many. <laughs> you can tell that everybody's been mining stuff. Ooh, perfect. Okay, uh... Oh, wait, but I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that. And then I'm going to run. Oh, I'm not. Nope. Run, run, run. <laughs> okay. Really? So long as I get some soul sand, I do need... Okay. <laughs> I need nether quartz. Oh, excuse you. Well, I should I should probably be grateful that their hitbox doesn't come in here. <laughs> it's 
So these are our starter bees. We're gonna need a lot more bees. <laughs> so a certain portion of today is gonna be spent breeding the bees. But I figured we could we could start out with one hive and then go from there. I do want to put some of them down here by my crop fields because bees will pollinate crops and make them grow faster. So in the event of me needing so many more thatch roofs, uh, this will help with the wheat growing faster. The bees help. But I also want to put some up on the hill there, up near our sheilings. They'll probably be on, on this side of the wall instead of behind the wall where the animals are, just, just so that there's a bit of separation. But, um, but we're going to get bees up there as well. Okay, so I've got two different designs. One of them is for a honeycomb farm and one of them is for honey specifically, like honey bottles and honey blocks. So... We're gonna, we're, we're gonna, let's, let's, let's get building. Let's build some honeycomb farms. Harvesting honey from wild beehives dates to at least 10,000 years ago. And there's even rock art in Spain that shows somebody harvesting honey from bees. I really, I really love that I found this rock art. <laughs> it's so good. Domestic beekeeping is also really old and dates to at least four and a half thousand years ago in Egypt. But honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if it was actually older than that. And that's just the first clear representation that we have of it in the archaeological record. Beeswax was also used to seal pottery in the ancient world so that people could store liquids and oils into jars without that liquid or oil seeping into the ceramics. I added paintings around my buyer house, the... the people part of the buyer house. I love the new paintings, especially, especially the sunflower one. I really love the sunflower one. Also, in case you didn't know, you can put paintings on trap doors. Um, so long as you don't put the trap door down that has the, the painting on it, like the central one, then you're generally fine. So like I can, this, this trap door, I can put that down, right? And the painting's still good. It's so long as you don't do the middle one. Then, then you can put it on the on the edge of trapdoors so long as the edge of the trapdoor lines up with the edge of a block, basically. Um, and then I also added some banners to the doorways. So you can put banners on doors and then open the doors and shut the doors and it doesn't do anything to the banners. They're just hanging on the door. Um, now, like that, if you get too close before you open the door, you won't be able to open the door. So it's a little bit, it takes a little bit of practice, but... A lot of these, uh, a lot of these houses would have some kind of cloth over the door just to help keep the warm air in and the cold air out. So I liked, I like putting those there. Okay, so we've built our, our, our tree hives. <laughs> we've built our, our beehive trees and now it's time to build. So these are honeycomb farms. So, so these bees are all producing honeycomb. And now it's time to build some farms for honey. So this design, the tree design, is just going to be for the honeycombs so that I can remember which is which, right? So these farms are the honeycomb farms. Honeycomb farms. The, the honey farms I've designed are a skep design. So let me talk about skeps and beehives and all sorts of goodness. In Scotland, and in a lot of Western Europe, bees were kept in something called a skep, which is a woven basket made from straw or grass or rushes and bound traditionally with bramble stems, although I'm sure you could bind it with other materials too. Skeps are a lot smaller than what I'm building here, but I thought it would be fun to make my honey farm skep shaped. So this is what we're doing. In some places in Scotland, skeps often had some kind of covering made from thatch or rushes to keep the rain out as well. And sometimes they were sheltered in alcoves in a wall, which are sometimes called bee bowls. But there are some problems with skeps, or at least some, some disadvantages, problems, etc. So first off, beekeepers couldn't check inside the hive for diseases or pests with traditional skeps. And skeps are actually banned in some countries today because you can't easily check for disease or pests. The other downside to skeps is that it's rather difficult to harvest honey from a traditional skep without killing at least some of the bees. A lot of beekeepers would try to get the bees to disperse before harvesting honey, but it was fairly common for a number of bees to die during honey collection. In later periods, skeps had a small basket or cap on top, and the main skep had a small hole that the cap covered, so that allowed beekeepers to harvest the honey with less threat to the bees, and these later designs of skeps worked significantly better until modern hive designs started appearing in the 18th century or so. So let's talk 
honey. Honey is made by honey bees, which seems obvious, right? So, the bees collect the nectar from flowers and they suck it up through their proboscis, which is that little tube-like mouth that they have. The nectar then sits in what's called their honey stomach, which is not the same as their actual stomach. It's kind of like right above their actual stomach, but it's still called a honey stomach. And then as it sits in the honey stomach, it's mixed with basically saliva from the bees and also some different proteins. And then the bees regurgitate that nectar so that hive bees can turn it into honey. Hive bees will then suck up the regurgitated nectar and regurgitate it themselves. And when they regurgitate it, they make bubbles so that it evaporates some of the nectar's water as they keep regurgitating it. And then the nectar becomes a bit thicker. They do this process of like sucking up the nectar and regurgitating it. They, they can do this for as long as 20 minutes before it's the right consistency to store. And then they store this kind of quote-unquote honey, it's not quite honey yet, but like honey, proto-honey, pre-honey, almost honey. They store this in one of their little cells in their beehive and they constantly keep their hive at a high temperature. So basically bees can, can regulate temperature within their hive. So they keep it at about 35 degrees centigrade or 95 degrees Fahrenheit. And that helps more of the water in the honey evaporate. And once enough of it has evaporated and it becomes the right consistency for honey that we all know and love, that's when the bees will cap the cell with beeswax so that the honey will stay safe pretty much indefinitely un until they need to use it. So that's that. We've got some skeps here and we've got loads of bees. I've been spending so much time breeding bees. Oh good, I've finally got, okay, all right. It took a while, a long while to get bees in both of these hives. I'm not sure why, because like there were bees in this one for a while and then they populated that one before they came over to this one. I'm not sure if it's, I don't know, it must be something in the bee AI or something. But uh, but yeah, so this is, this is a whole bunch of bees. Um, I don't have more flowers at the moment to breed all these guys uh but i think at this point these beehives are pretty full i think i think they're pretty full um but then i also mentioned that i wanted to build some some beehives up on the hill and part of that is to do with beehives and honey that's that's made next to or close to heather there's a tradition in scotland of making heather honey and as I said in the last episode, I'm covering this hill in heather. I mean, it's lilacs and Minecraft, but you know what I mean. So because we've got heather on the hill, we're also going to have some bees on the hill to make some heather honey. The way that honey tastes also depends on what flowers bees have access to. And heather is fantastic for bees. Because heather flowers in the autumn, so this time of year more or less, that is long after most other flowers have already wilted for the year. So heather gives bees a source of food long after all the other flowers have faded. But not only that, heather has loads of nectar in it. So it generally means that bees can produce a lot more honey from a single heather plant than they can from like a single daffodil or something. Heather honey has a different taste to standard honey. It's a bit more floral and actually different types of heather lead to different types of heather honey. So ling heather honey is a lot thicker while bell heather honey is thinner and it's also fairly dark and really strongly flavoured. Heather is so beneficial to hives that some beekeepers here in Scotland will actually transport their hives to the hills in autumn. It was particularly popular to do that in the 19th century but it's also not unheard of today either. One difficulty with heather though is that because it provides so much nectar, if the heather crop fails, that's a major source of food for bees that doesn't appear that year. So in 1912, 1946 and 1985, the heather crop failed in Scotland and entire colonies of bees died of starvation. Okay, this last thing, I know we've done a lot of building and we've done a lot with bees, but I, I need to tell you about this. There is an absolutely wonderful tradition of telling the bees in Scotland and also in other parts of Europe, but I'm focusing on Scotland here. Telling the bees is a tradition where people would tell the bees if there was a funeral or a wedding happening or really any other major change to a person's life. 
It's believed that telling the bees will ensure a happy future in the case of a wedding or prevent further sorrow in the event of a funeral. And some people, for, for like weddings and things, some people would even share some of their wedding cake with the bees. I love this. <laughs> so naturally, because cake is a thing on this server, we obviously need to share some cake with my bees. Right, okay. So I've got the cakes and I've got some chiseled tough because chiseled tough. Harold um, gave some chisel tough and, and said stone carved triskelis and uh, absolutely right, more or less, at least as far as we're going to get in Minecraft. So let's give some bees some cake. I think we should put one over here somewhere. Maybe like here? It might end up getting moved at some point, but I think if we put it here, it's more or less out of the way. So you guys get cake. And then, yous get cake. Uh, I'm gonna put this like right here. That is not in the way, but it's still like fancy, right? And then these guys are gonna get cake. Probably like right here. Right, bees, I have a cake delivery for you. Hold on. Let me put it over here. Like right here, maybe. Or here? I could put it here. Let's put it here. And then the final cake. Yeah, now all my bees have cake. <laughs> I love this tradition. Okay, so we've now got we've got our honeycomb hives, we've got our honey hives over here, we've got our heather honey hives, hold on, our heather honey hives way over here. Look at these guys. And the cool thing that I've realized um, is these are close enough that if I sit in my house, in my buyer house, then it captures all of these guys, all of these hives, which is like it should, because because you can be 128 blocks away and uh, and it'll capture it. So these hives will all be fine. But also, it captures all the way through here. When I'm at my at my base, I'm probably a bit too far at the moment to to capture this these hives. But when I'm sitting in my buyer house, I'm close enough that the bees, even from this hive, will uh, will come out and say hello. So, uh, so yeah, so we've got, we've got honey, we've got honeycomb, we've got loads of supplies. Here, let me actually see how many supplies we have. I need to eat something. Hold on. <laughs> I could hear you all just telling me through your screens. Hold on. Let me just have a snack. All right. Okay. This is it. There we go. Okay. So number one, making honey blocks is so tedious. It takes forever and a day. Why is it four bottles of honey and you only get one bottle of honey per harvest? So, so honey blocks are so expensive. So those those are going to be in a markup uh, in the shop. Um, but I've also got a number of honeycomb blocks. And then as you can see, I've got loads of honeycomb. But yeah, I think we've got we've got the beginnings of some honey shop stock. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a, a shop in town. And I think I'm going to use the same skep design that I've got here. I'm just not going to do any of the underground part. And I'm going to swap out, obviously, the, the expensive blocks for, for just some planks and maybe put a door like right here so that you can just walk into the skep. So let's go build this at spawn and get my server mates some honey blocks. You know how I didn't build anything last episode? I made up for it in this episode. At least I hope so, because that's, that's each, I built 10 different skeps <laughs> and now I'm building another one at spawn. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so there's, there's a lot going on. It's fine. It's fine. It's all fine. Everything's fine. And we've also got mail. Let's check this, because I think there's some supplies in here that have been left. <laughs> Goodness, so many things. Okay, dripstone is excellent. Thank you whoever sent dripstone. I'll have to get on to a, a lava farm soon. Um, and, and I love that somebody left me the Scottish flag. Um, let me chat about the Scottish flag. I was, I put this, I almost put this in the last video when I was talking about swag, um, but I didn't because I was like, this is too ridiculous. But here you go. Here's the clip anyway. If you take a double swag bead, 
and you cut it just so, so that the intersection is in the middle of like where you've cut it and you you slice it where where kind of the, the top of one of the hills is and then you slice it again where the top of the next hill is <laughs> and you've got the intersection in the middle, it forms a white cross on a dark blue, on a blue background. Which if you didn't know is the same as the flag of Scotland. So really we could say that Scotland has double swag and has had double swag since the Iron Age, at least. <laughs> so yeah, so that's 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 Scotland's flag. Um, and then nine stacks of string is excellent. Um, this is from Harold. Thank you, Harold. This is to help with candles. So I will be making candles and putting them... I'm going to put them in the honey shop temporarily, but then I'm going to also make a, a bigger episode about candles and talk about a candle shop and things like that. So don't you worry. Candles are coming. They're just... I need more time to organize them before I can make a video on them. And then extra cookies... And a lay hop? What's a lay hop? What, what is this? Need a friend to pick up items for you but don't have time to set up a guest room in your home? Find yourself at spawn but realize you left without your best friend? A lay hop is here to help. A lay hop, the LA renting service. I like that there's an asterisk. A lay hop, the LA renting service, is there for you to take an LA whenever you've need of one and bring them back when you're done. The LAs are happy to help and are here voluntarily. No LA has been harmed in the making of this station. I love this. This is from V's. So we've got, oh, that's great. Just an LA renting station. That's amazing. I'm so happy. Okay, so we're going to leave the string here for now. Am I gonna do that? Let me let me take like a couple of stacks. Let me take four stacks and we'll bring them back over to where we're um building. Alright, let's get to building this shop. It's done. The honey shop is done. And it's also right next to Moon's flower shop, which is great. Also, I need to buy some flowers from Moon. Um, but yeah, and there's a tree with a beehive. I was debating bringing some beehives over as well, which I might still do and just like stick, I don't know, in the corners here or something, just so that there are a few more bees. But I do like that, that Moon's already got a tree with a beehive in it. it it's, a good, it's a good plan for flower shop plus, plus honey shop. Um, so yeah, it's there's not much in here. I put a little bit of decorative honey and honeycomb blocks around. I might put a bit more when I've got more, um, but I wanted to make sure that there was stock. So I've got honeycomb, uh, honeycomb blocks, honey blocks, honey and candles. And oh, we've already made some sales. That's really nice. Uh, I will take it. I will happily take it. I've done just a diamond per stack of the honeycomb because it's really easy to get the honeycomb just by AFKing for a bit. Um, the honeycomb blocks, I've done two diamonds per 32, so it's basically it's the same if you bought the honeycomb or the honeycomb blocks. There isn't necessarily a saving or anything there. I might change that in the future, but for now I figured just keep it as, a, as an easy exchange rate. And then honey blocks are two diamonds per eight because they're really expensive at the moment. Um, if that doesn't work too well, then I'll, I'll, again, I'll change the price, but I figured I'd start there, especially because I'm about to go away for a couple of weeks. I'm going to the US, hold on, I'm going to the United States to see my family. I haven't seen my family since 2019. Well, I haven't been to the US and there's a large portion of my family that I haven't seen since 2019, like January of 2019. So we're going to America for like two weeks 
um, and I'm going to finally be able to see a bunch of my family, but it does mean that I'm not going to be on the server, so I wanted to make sure that there was at least some stock here, and then uh, I'll, I'll see what my server mates end up needing once I'm back from America. That also means that there's going to be a little bit of a delay in terms of videos because uh, I was hoping to get a video done to be able to publish it like while I was away, um, but Chronic Illness had other plans, as it always does. So, uh, so there's going to be this episode and then it might be a few weeks before the next episode happens. So don't, don't you worry if there's a bit of a delay. It's because I'm seeing family that I haven't seen for five and a half years. <laughs> So it's it's a good reason that there's that there are no videos. Anyway, um, I also did put a bit of candles and we've sold some candles as well. I figured one diamond per 32 because it's a stack of honeycomb and a stack of string per. I don't have a, a cave spider spawner or a spider spawner to get string, but Harold does and he's happy to sort of contribute to that. Um, but I do also want to like give him a bit of uh like stuff for for all of the string that he gives me so i figured uh one diamond per 32 and then i can i can share some of the profits with harold as well and then oh nice okay so uh so i've got bottle recycling um basically somewhere to put glass bottles if you if you want them if you don't want them i need them for for honey oh okay so we have got honey bottles i do want to also look at the flower shop because Moon recently finished this. Um, flower power, yeah. I I love this. So many flowers and decorative pots and everything. Oh, I should put an end chest. I need to remember that end chests, ender chests exist. I always forget they do. One diamond per two stacks. What about these? One diamond per two stacks. Oh, right, okay. Well, that's good. I'm gonna take two of those just now and put a diamond in. I need more gorse on my hills, so so we'll do that in the next episode. Let's quickly use the respawn express. We're gonna use we're gonna use the Wright brothers break room. There we go. <laughs> Last thing to do this episode. We've done so much this episode, but one final thing. I want to grab some honeycomb. And we're gonna grab my axe. And we're gonna come in here. Nope. And we're gonna wax. Once I remember to sneak, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna wax the cooktop. So yeah, so after after weeks and weeks, we can finally stop this from oxidizing. And with that, I think it's time to end the episode. That's all from me for today, everybody. Thank you all for tuning in, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.